Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Thursday, the 22nd of June. Today is a day of commemoration. We remember St. Alban. Reading from For All the Saints. Alban was a soldier in one of the Roman legions which guarded the province of Britannia early in the 3rd century. This legion's camp was at Verula Mium, to the north of London. Though a pagan, Alban gave shelter to a Christian priest who was fleeing persecution. When he observed the priest doing his prayers, he was moved to question him about the church's faith. The priest's replies led Alban to accept Christ as his only Lord and Savior. In the meantime, reports that the priest was hiding with Alban reached the authorities. Soldiers were sent to seize the priest. When the detail reached his dwelling, Alban met them at the doorway. He was wearing his guest's cloak, the customary garb of a Christian priest, and presented himself to the soldiers as the man they were looking for. Taken before the military governor who discovered the ruse, Alban refused to offer the pagan sacrifices required by law. He was condemned to death and beheaded that same day. Alban's martyrdom is considered to have been his baptism. St. Alban, first martyr in Britain, circa 209. Let us pray. Almighty God, you conferred on your holy martyr Alban such love for the mercy of Christ that he gave his life to save a hunted Christian. Grant us, after his example, to be so faithful in our confession of your gospel that we may shelter those who flee from persecution and bear the reproaches which threaten their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is glorified in the lives of his saints. O come, let us worship. Psalm 84 is very encouraging. The psalmist tells of their deep yearning for the presence of God, the presence of God which truly is our healing. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young. A place near your altar, O Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their heart on the pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does God withhold from those whose walk is blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Let us pray. God of pilgrims, teach us to recognize your dwelling place in the love, generosity, and support of those with whom we share our journey. And help us to worship you in our response to those who need our care. For all the world is your temple, and every human heart is a sign of your presence, made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue in First Samuel chapter 2, verse 27 to the end of the chapter. This is a prophecy against the house of Eli. Now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your father's house when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? 
I chose your father out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, and to wear an ephod in my presence. I also gave your father's house all the offerings made with fire by the Israelites. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribe for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel? Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promised that your house and your father's house would minister before me forever. But now, the Lord declares, far be it from me. Those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me will be disdained. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your father's house, so that there will not be an old man in your family line, and you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, in your family line there will never be an old man. Every one of you that I do not cut off from my altar will be spared, only to blind your eyes with tears and to grieve your heart, and all your descendants will die in the prime of life. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, will be assigned to you. They will both die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his house and he will minister before my anointed one always. Then everyone left in your family line will come and bow down before him for a piece of silver and a crust of bread and plead. Appoint me to some priestly office so I can have food to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is clearly a very harsh judgment by the Lord against the house of Eli. Eli, as we learned, is turning a blind eye to the terrible behavior of his two sons who were priests under his charge. Because he allowed this wicked behavior to continue, the people would have been discouraged and disillusioned in their sacrificial life, their life of offering to God. Hence the very harsh judgment. Lord, have mercy. Moving from the faithlessness of Eli's sons to Peter's preaching in Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 36. This is Peter continuing to address the crowd post the resurrection. After the giving of the Holy Spirit, he addresses the crowds in great numbers. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will dwell in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet David said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to read to you a note from the Life Application Bible. Peter spoke forth rightly about the resurrection. As Peter preached, the events of Christ's death and the resurrection were still hot news, less than two months old. Christ's execution had been carried out in public before many witnesses. His empty tomb was available for inspection just a short distance away. If Christ had not truly died, Peter's message would have been laughed at or ignored. If Christ had not been resurrected, authorities could have produced his body and put an end to this new faith. But Peter and the apostles had witnessed the risen Christ, changed men. They announced the news with great passion and conviction. Our faith and our credibility also rest on the truth of the empty tomb. Why? For a number of important reasons. According to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, the resurrection of Christ means that his sacrifice for sin was acceptable to God so we can be completely forgiven. It means that our Savior is alive and active, able to help us in times of need. It also means that one day we too will conquer death. The Christian faith rests on the basic fact of the empty tomb, Don't neglect this essential part of the gospel when you share your faith with others. End quote. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we ask by your grace for a day of fulfillment and peace. Grant to us also the courage to share your good news of your resurrection and your power over sin, hell, death, and the grave. Grant us courage and a sense of timing. Perhaps someone this day would like to know. Lord, have mercy. Lord, teach us to love others as you have so freely loved us. Lord, have mercy. Risen Lord, Prince of Peace, We ask for peace and justice in your world, for reconciliation with our First Nations brothers and sisters, for justice for the missing and murdered indigenous women and children, for peace in Ukraine, Sudan, Syria, and Israel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we ask that you would strengthen and relieve those who are in any type of need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we ask that you would renew the church through the power of your life-giving Holy Spirit. Bless our special vestry this weekend as we consider our missional action plan for the next several months. Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, friends, the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier rest upon you and all that you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday.